Alright guys, here's a quick look at the new Metabone Speed Booster for the EF lens to Micro Four Thirds uh, camera setups, for example like a GH4, the popular setup. So once I heard that the Speed Booster was released from Metabones, I quickly went ahead and ordered strictly from their website. And I believe I ordered on Tuesday and it came uh, on Friday, so very, very quick uh, delivery. I ordered FedEx, the, the I guess the most expensive option, which was around 35 bucks. So I mean came in really quick and I have a long weekend so I'm pretty excited to try this out. I just want to give you guys a quick look at it so you can see this is Speed Booster. There's actually two different ones available, just the adapter and also the Speed Booster which has the magnifying optics in there to uh, give you like a stop faster and just make sure it lends a, uh, a really good setup. So you can see, nice box, nice presentation back here. It even tells you Canon EF 2 micro four thirds uh, adapter and it actually came inside, it had bubble wrap, came inside one of their Metabones box, also wrapped and packed inside another FedEx uh, Express box. So very nice, it came well protected, no damage at all. Let me take it out and show you guys how it actually comes inside this box. We have a plastic casing right here. Very rugged, I mean it's a hard plastic so you can actually use it to travel and it's not gonna you know, fall apart and it will actually protect your uh, speed booster. So upon opening it you can see Get this little lip here that put some pressure on this uh, adapter to keep it from moving around. We got some L Allen keys to uh, remove some screws when needed. For example, if you want to remove this little tripod mount adapter here, you can actually take it off, or you can leave it on. And instead of using the bottom of the camera to mount, you know, uh, on a tripod or whatever you setup you have, you can put it on here. So that way, the adapter takes the weight instead of the camera. It's trying to support the weight of a much larger, you know, Canon EF uh, lens. You can see very nice quality quarter inch 20 tripod screw very nice uh, ru uh, rugged aluminum body right here or a metal steel whatever this is but it's a very rigid uh, alloy body you can see EF to micro four thirds mount speed booster and the speed booster has a, a special glass or a special magnifying glass I would call it to uh, you know take all of that from the lens and magnify it down to the smaller uh, micro four thirds uh, sens sensor. See, we got the little electronic pins here, so you can actually get the uh, electronic image stabilization, or you can adjust the uh, aperture through the dial. So that way, if you're using one of those Canon EF lenses and you don't have, and you can't really adjust the iris or the aperture because everything is all electronic, you can actually do it through the dial now with your uh, four thirds camera, for example, a GH4. You can see here. Let me put my uh, cap back on so that way when I touch the adapter, I don't touch the optics itself. Let we'll me give you guys a quick look. We have a release here, so when you mount your lens, you pull this back to release the lens. So that's very nice, it actually locks the lens in. You can see what it does right here when you pull it back. The pin goes out. This little cover here is access to a micro USB. So if you're using a camera that doesn't have any elect uh, power out so that way you know when you hook it up to I'm not sure what camera has that but I'm assuming some cameras don't have it so you can always hook up a micro USB to actually power this adapter and I believe this dial or this little switch up here is the ability to uh, adjust the aperture and the iris you know if you have to power the adapter with a smaller micro USB uh, power source or 5 volt power source um, but yeah, everything is actually done through the camera itself. You can just turn the dials to adjust the aperture and the iris. So very nice. One thing I do want to point out too is when I first got mine, I noticed that I had a little bit of a smudging on the lens. Let me see if I can show you. Um, the camera, well my uh, phone can't really pick it up, but there's like a little bit of a smudging right over here. So I'm not exactly sure if I can just take a lens cloth or uh, you know microfiber cloth and clean it up. But I'll probably contact Metabones and see, you know, what can I do to clean it because it came this way. But, you know, so far from my testing with the lenses, I haven't had any issues with it or any problems. So I didn't really notice, uh, you know, anything bad yet. But I've been shooting more inside, so there's not a lot of light. But I'm maybe outside, you probably pick up a little bit of that oil or smudging, whatever it is. Also on the back side, there's like this little streak here, I guess, when they were cleaning it or when they were testing it out, maybe something kind of rubbed it. But so far, once again, I haven't noticed any issues or, uh, you know, uh, ill effects with uh, the little smudging on the adapter itself. So let me show you guys how it mounts to my uh, Micro Four Thirds. Let me put this away. Got my GH4 here, very popular camera. This is one of my favorite ones right now. 
I use it more for just video for around the house, following my kids, you know, just do some little, uh, you know, shots here and there for, for other people. But you can see I'm using a Panasonic 1235 on here. Let me take this off and uh, put this lens aside. You can see I take care of my lens. I'll put some tape on the bottom so I don't scratch it when I put it on one of my handheld gimbals. So as you can see here, speed booster pops right in. It's a pretty nice fit, you know, it doesn't really move around. It does have a little bit of rotational movement, but just like all lens, you will have that same issue just because there's no way to lock it down like a red camera. But most DSLRs, when you mount your camera, it does have a little bit of movement, but actually pretty tight, and you have to use a lot of force to actually rotate it. So no uh, bad, you know, side effects with it. You can see the tripod adapter here. So you can actually mount it to your tripod stand or your brushless gimbal or jib or whatnot. But yeah, and the good thing about mounting the speed booster on this uh, Metabones uh, uh, lens adapter is just because the camera body, it's a small camera, but when you fit on one of the bigger EF lens, it's a lot of weight. And you really don't want to put a lot of weight on the, you know, the camera body. So this actually supports a lot of the lens weight and it kind of balances the lens and the camera. But, you know, I could be wrong, but that's what I'm assuming, guys. <laughs> By all means, I'm not a professional. So if I'm saying some of these camera terminologies wrong, please forgive me, guys. This is more of a hobby for me. So I do this for fun. And my friend actually convinced me that I had to get this uh, speed booster because I have a GH4. And just the ability to use a Canon lens just makes uh, things a lot uh, better it improves to some of the shootings in low light and just you know you can use a lot wider range of lens besides just the smaller micro four thirds and you know if you have a Canon 5D you don't have to sell all of your lens because it doesn't work with the GH4 now actually these are my friend's lens he, he lent me his uh, Tokina 11 to 16 lens and his 7 to 28 uh, 17 to 28 millimeter lens because I, I like the, the wider lens just to uh, uh, you get those shots because I use more of the handheld gimbals and I like just the wider look and it just gets a lot of my you know stuff in the uh, the framing. So let me show you how it works. So first off, uh, Metamone uh, does say that you cannot use an EFS lens. So it is true, you cannot use this because let me show you guys a, uh, a little quick uh, difference between an EF lens and a EFS. The EFS is more for like the Rebel series or some of the other crop sensor lens, but you can see here it fits an adapter, but the EFS lens has this little ridge, this little black part up here, and the EF lens doesn't. And when you try to fit that inside this uh, Metabones adapter, the Metabones adapter was designed to fit only the EF, and you can see when you put it in, this lens would never seat completely in because this little lip here, this gets in the way. So if you guys have some of these little crop sensor lens, it's, it's not gonna work, guys. But I was hoping it would, maybe it would, but no way it's gonna work. And I have one of this from my little Canon Rebel uh, T3i that I use more for pictures. But you know, it's just one of those basic cameras. To give you guys a quick demonstration how it fits, you line up the red dot with the red dot, very nice. Bam, fits right on in. Pretty nice fit, I mean, you have a little bit of rotation movements, but you know, for handheld and video work, it's not loose at all, it's not gonna move around. So very, very nice. Um, one thing you do, you do not get with this adapter is the ability to use autofocus. So if you're trying to autofocus, it's not going to work. So they already mentioned that too in the um, on the specs on the website. So you can see this is an F4 lens. Or let me see where is it at. It's an F4 lens, and I can bring it all the way down to 2.8 on my uh, GH4. I'm pretty sure this is not exactly accurate, but it is close enough, and you can see it's pretty bright. You know, for indoors, it's, it's actually uh, very low lit in here right now, and there's no autofocus. Oh, so you do have to manually pull focus, and this shouldn't be a problem for a lot of guys because I mean, for a lot of video work, you really don't want to use autofocus because, you know, it's, it's always better to actually pull focus manually so you can like, get one of those nice, you know, shots. You can, you know, get, you can see focus and then kind of pull away like this. So it's always better to manually pull focus, which a lot of guys tend to do. Now, if you're planning to do this for photography, you won't have autofocus. So if you're doing something fast action, you got to be really quick to like, you know, pull focus and know which way your lens go. For example, this lens will tell you, you know, you can do infinity or a uh, close up. It tells you how far you should be, but you just got to get used to it. And I'm, a lot, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys already know how to pull focus, but for a lot of beginners like me, it does take a lot or a little bit of getting used to, to uh, use this lens. So let me see here, show you guys. You can go all the way up to uh, 16 on here and 2.8 on here. So I'm pretty sure it's not it's not really true 2.8, it's probably more of a uh, F3 or aperture of three. So you can see there, let me power off and lens release, pull this out. And let me put on the Tokina 
11 to 16 millimeter lens. This lens is actually very nice. I'm, I'm actually uh, really impressed with this lens for indoors and lower light conditions. It just it's a little bit brighter, a little bit faster than my uh, Panasonic 1235, and I think it's a little bit sharper too. Maybe it's just me, but in my opinion, I think it's a little bit sharper with the Canon lens, maybe because, you know, you have the ability to pull in more light with the speed booster. So, I mean, uh, by all means, I'm not a professional, so some of my stuff may not be true. And actually, the, the cell phone makes this, uh, you know, LCD screen look a little bit brighter, but it's actually pretty low in here, low light right now. You can see 1116. I can drop it all the way down to uh, 2.0, which is uh, actually very nice. It's a little bit brighter than my uh, Panasonic uh, lens. And I shoot a lot indoors, and I think I may be using my friend's lens more for some of my uh, multi-door reviews, as you, as you can see over here. So, you know, it's a good indoor light, you can see. Lighting is, lights up really well, except, once again, no autofocus. You got to manually pull focus, but it's not that hard. You can actually, you know, put into video mode. You can magnify it and then you know get your focus done before you actually shoot like so and then get out and then go shoot so that's you no know, nice touch um i can bring this one all the way up to I believe 16 which you know you can't bring it up to like 22 or something like that on uh, compared to a panasonic lens and you can see i got my little sensor uh, enabled so when i put my eye on here the screen shuts off but i may just disable that uh, function because it's kind of annoying in a way but Back to the speed booster, you can see, very nice. I mean, I'm, I'm actually starting to like the speed booster. It's uh, it, it's just the ability to use Canon lens makes it a lot easier because, you know, when you switch, if you're one of those Canon guys and you, you know, switch to a GH4 for video work, there is not a lot of lens selections and a lot of guys are buying the Nikon adapter, but when you can use Canon lens, because I'm pretty sure it's a lot of Canon users who's trying to sell their 5D and all their Canon lenses when they're switching over to the GH4 because the Canon lens won't fit on here but good news Metabones made it work now so that's the one main uh, I guess uh, question that everybody wanted was when is the EF lens going to be compatible with the Micro Four Thirds and it finally works now with the speed booster so big plus I mean just you know because there's a lot of smaller lens and you have to buy your whole lens selections all over again it makes it's very expensive when you're buying lens, you know, it's not like they're, they're like 50 to 100 bucks a, a pop, it's some lens can go up to like a grand or more, you know, and it's very, very expensive and if you can use your old lens and make it work GH4, especially the full frame setup, it's actually very nice and for guys who's shooting in 4K, now once again, I'm not a professional, but when you shoot in 4K, it crops it out a lot and you can use a speed booster, it actually, you know, less cropping and just gives you more actual usable pictures and, you know, pixels when you're editing and doing other stuff like that but I do this more for fun I don't really shoot in 4k much but I bought this camera cuz you know it's you know it's good for video and it's really compact and it works well battery life is amazing so yeah that was a quick look at the Metabone speed uh, speed booster right here um, I'll probably have my friend do a more of a detailed review cuz I'm not really uh, a pro photographer pro cinematographer so I can't give you guys a really honest uh, you know or a really professional look one thing I do do not like is this little piece right here. If you remove it, it comes off. So if you don't pay attention to where you put this and you lose this, this little port, USB port here is always gonna be open. But you know, this adapter is not waterproof or weatherproof. So, you know, the GH4 is somewhat weather sealed, but since the adapter and some Canon lens is not weather sealed, you're gonna get some water inside if you don't pay attention because this Tokina lens doesn't have a rubber seal. But, you know, if you're using some of the Panasonic lens or some of the Canon more expensive lens, like the outdoor lens, like one of those, uh, like a 7200 millimeter lens, it actually works quite well. Also, if I had to mention, too, that uh, both of these lens does not have image stabil uh, stabilization, tongue-tied there, the image uh, stabilizer. So, you know, I can't show you guys exactly how it works, but I did get my hands on one of my friend's uh, 70 to 200 Canon lens with the IS. And it actually works quite well. I'm very impressed because, you know, when you can use the IS, especially if you're doing pictures or just some of those handheld videos, the stabilizer does wonders and it keeps the image or the footage really, really stabilized. But, you know, for, for my style, I use a lot more of the handheld gimbals and the image stabilizer doesn't work too well. It kind of works against with the stabilized gimbal. So, I mean, you know, it, it all depends on what type of shooting you want, if you want the stabilizer on or off. But this speed booster does give you the ability to you know power the stabilizer so if you have some of those nice lens like a 1635 or a 24105 you can throw it on here now 
and stabilize your footage, which is also a big plus. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick look, this quick uh, kind of rundown and kind of showing you guys how the speed booster looks. Uh, you know, when I have some more time, I'll be posting some more, I guess some more side-by-side uh, -side comparison between my Canon or my Panasonic 1235 and some of these other lenses to show you guys, you know, how uh, how much or how I can shoot in low light, maybe I'll try that, but you know, or I just might end up leaving that to my friend to do the review for you guys because he's uh, really good with, uh, he's into uh, cameras and he does a much better job than me, but he's on vacation, but yeah. I mean, I'm trying this out. It's very fun, you know. It's very cool. It's my hobby, my new hobby, cameras and trying out new setups. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, guys. And remember, if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel yet, subscribe to stay up to date with any more uh, future videos that I may be releasing, you know, soon with the GH4, the Metabone Speed Booster, and just trying out different uh, lenses to show you guys how it looks inside and outdoors. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, guys, thanks for watching.